welcome. We're live from Xi'an, China for the World Cyber Games 2019. No, oh, nice they're on the cliff. The cliff. In the meanwhile, we've got Trace hiding in the back. He's going to be able to pick up the double kill. It's in trouble, he comes to storm on low, Carly will use defensively, trying oh. to save him though! Oh no, they're not going to be able to do it! Look at that, he's going to end the game on a corner, and we see on the corner, and that's going to be game! Welcome back, coming up next, 2v2, AC and RF facing off against Joe Bao and uh, no Missy. Yeah, no, so uh, Fearless here is... 30, oh, fearless. Yeah, 38 percent in 2v2, and Zhu Bao on the other side of it, 54 percent. So not quite the record that Aukrap and the and RF have. They're both at 51 percent win rate, or 48 percent from Aukrap, 51 from RF. And we have just gotten official word that tomorrow Immortals will be facing off against Chaos Theory, their old teammate in Oh Yeah. That's going to be fun, and of course also SK facing off against Game With. And then a big time matchup, Liquid vs. Ponos. Yeah, I cannot wait for tomorrow. You know, every single one of these teams, now that it has been officially announced who they're playing against, have already started practicing, other than, I mean, obviously, Immortals, who are right playing here on right the battlefield. Now. Yeah, I know that uh, Liquid really wanted Ponos, and SK also, I, Mort was talking about how he wanted a shot at Game With. So, some good matchups here. I know that Immortals love to get one back from Ponos, but the settle for Chaos Theory going up against Oya. Yeah, Morton was very, very interested in playing against Game With. He says he wants to go up against KK as a team. KK, a lot of respect behind that young man's name. Shubao, fearless for LGD top of your screen. RF and crap for Immortals at the bottom. And you can see already Giant Skeleton out. And it is a NATO Lava Band. I do really like the Lava Band here from Immortals. As do I. I think that the Lava Band is huge, especially with NATO being banned. Now, they obviously did not know what their, their opponent's banned when they placed their ban. But that makes it so that Lava Loon is a complete non-factor, obviously. So Giant up on the right-hand side, and we have seen a lot more Giant here in WCG than we saw in CRL this season. Yeah, we've seen a lot of the double Giant, double Prince with the Rage now here at WCG, something that's been a lot more popular than it ever was in CRL West because of the bands of Lumberjack. I think a lot of teams were forced to find a way to, to Rage up their troops, so why not just try out Rage? And then in turn, they found out that that increased their cycle, so uh, it increased the quickness of their cycle, which actually pays off more in 2v2. Baby Dragon really shredded that right-hand tower. Belch, belch, belch on the 1231. So now Immortals in a pretty good spot and a double elixir time. Dark Prince gets in front. Giant on top of that as well. So that Baby Dragon for LGD not going to do much. And the Flying Machine for Immortals really getting a ton of value. Yes, uh, that poison was dropped just a tile high, and the flying machine was distracted, so able to get, as you said, a lot of value. And now this graveyard coming down, you'd think the poison would be, wouldn't be necessary with all these units on the board. Well defended by Immortals' first graveyard, not much of an issue, and you see ranging up again are the North American champions from first season. Nice freeze coming in. And that the should giant be it. Double Prince Freeze. What a fascinating deck. And it pays off in spades for RF and AC. There you go. Game number one in the books. The God RF and Ah Crap taking it for Immortals. With again, I'm Andrew, I'm enjoying so much seeing these different 2v2 constructions here at WCG. As am I, and it's something that is so important. You saw what happened last year with CRL, NA, and EU when they came to the World Finals. They kind of didn't know what hit them. So you have to be ever evolving when it comes to your 2v2 strategy. And they recognized a lot of Asia and China using the Rage and the Freeze, not just in graveyard decks. Yeah, and they decided, that, let's go ahead, we'll play the game they're playing. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, doing it better. Yes. Uh, hundred uh, percent, and that's one of the things about AC and RF. They're two of the best 2v2 specialists in the world, and their, com uh, their communication with one another is top tier. Yeah, always, both on and off the, yes, the in, yes. in and out of the arena as well. They certainly have a, a good time together on both ends, and a strong mentality as well. And 
that's paid off here. It's, it's kept them, look, Immortals did have a bit of a stumble partway through this season. Really? They had some ups really and downs, did. especially in 2v2, but when it mattered the most, they put things together and made their way here to WCG. Yeah, and, I, and again, we give a lot of credit to Trainer Luis. It's because he never gets, you'll never see Trainer Luis hanging his head down, and neither will any of his players because of that. He sets the tone, he sets the rhythm. He's a great example for these young gentlemen that he coaches, and uh, I, I can't be happier with Immortals this season turning it around as you said the first few weeks they didn't look like themselves sure and talking about coaching thematically that's a big thing about the three teams that are here at WCG yeah. between uh, KV for SK Gaming and then Eric we've talked about a lot for Team Liquid and Luis for Immortals all three of those are very sound coaches very strong mentally and also very good at being the right kind of coach for their squads that is a very very good point because obviously every single one of these squads has different personalities and we'll get more into that after this second game of 2v2 so giant freeze First time out for Immortals. We'll see what Joe Bao and Fearless have in store for the, you know, I can't even really call it the Americans anymore because, no. uh, you know, we have Royal and the, the young Lapakati mixed in as well. Yeah, from Belarus and uh, Royal obviously from Romania, as you heard me say, it's set number one. So Dark Prince is out on both sides. Miner picked up by the Dark Prince of LGD. <laughs> Flying Machine and Prince coming down, and Pekka comes down to meet. And now it's LGD's turn to come out and go for the giant deck. And look at that, Pekka, Mega Knight combo for Immortals. Love it. You see there, the Prince does connect with the charge. That E was Zap coming in just a hair late, but Pekka doing fine. She's now getting tanked for by the Mega Knight. The Mega Knight! Hey, yeah. Wow, the giant misses the double pull. Mega Knight gets a huge leap, so. While Pekka's going off to nowhere, Mega Knight does the damage. And you love the idea there that Jubao and Fearless had, but now they've got a lot of pressure coming down the left lane as well. Yeah, Dark Prince will take a nice big swing, and now Ram Rider, Miner to the back, Musketeer in trouble, and it is Jubao and Fearless on their back foot, thirsting for Elixir. Of course, they do have two Princes heading down, or two Dark Princes heading on the left-hand side. Maybe a high pull here. No, Ewiz comes down just to meet that Goblin. Goblin Brawler. He's still a goblin. He is a goblin. He's just a big, thick one. <laughs> yeah. So two minutes away, heading into double elixir time. Immortals currently sitting on a one set lead and looking like they are in good shape to add a second one here. And they can hold on and keep the same kind of pressure for the rest of the second game. I'll be honest, Rich, I don't really like that high prince to meet the E-Wiz. He could have played, been played back by the Princess Tower and then in turn maybe created a bigger offensive threat for RF and AC to deal with. But where it was at, they had so much elixir, there was only going to be a negative trade there. Lumberjack comes in, you see he goes straight to the Dark Prince and had his shield shredded by the Mega Knight. Lightning Very makes some room. Nice. That's going to be a connection. No great combination of the log and Prince to keep that off, but it still feels like Immortals in control of the pace. Baby oh. Dragon gets on, and that really makes things tough for LGD. Maybe a bit of miscommunication from LGD. They both had four or five Elixir in hand, and they just let that Baby Dragon get on tower. So now, just a spell away, and there it is. So RF and AC coming out on top two games in a row. You know, you gotta wonder about the mental focus and state right now of LGD, knowing that they were playing just for pride at this moment. Yeah. It's got to be kind of a defeating feeling to come into a game. Know that even no matter how well you do, it can't change the outcome. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. LGD did not have a great day against Chaos Theory yesterday. So this was really a big moment for them as an organization to feel like they actually got something out of WCG. But right now, Immortals is putting on a clinic. Yeah, and Chaos Theory, that's going to be a very interesting match for Immortals tomorrow. Benzer and Royal, yeah. that sounds like the one that I really, really want to see. And then, of course, the 2v2 squads going head-to-head -head as well will be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, you know, and so many people have told us that Benzer is the best mortar player in the world, but Lapakati is the self-proclaimed mortar god. So maybe, good point. just maybe, we'll get to see those guys go head-to-head. -head. That would be so much fun, especially for me, being a mortar lover. Well, even more uh, exciting than that, the third set in these finals is going to be best of five rather than best of three. So it's going to be a 1v1 yeah. best of three, a 2v2 best of three, and then a 1v1 best of five. So now we're going to see some of these big time players really go all out in a BO5 set, which is what, if you're at the top level, you want to see. 
Speaking of BO5s, a big, big shout out to our good friend, Juicy J. Let's go, Congratulations, Juicy! Congratulations, my brother. Getting that WCG championship. You saw Rich's Vic pick on Twitter. Just so <laughs> happy for him and his amazing mother who traveled all the way to Xi'an just to support. Yeah, we were all there in the crowd watching. And yeah. uh, people people around, the, the fans, the local fans, uh, were, were kept on looking at us because we were yelling so loud. And they were like, who are these guys who are so into Juicy J? And yeah, well, it's myself and Andrew. Yep. And yeah, we were having a very, very good time. So congrats again. Uh, and enjoy that hog rider and that big prize money and you know maybe we'll be seeing more of you next season yeah i really hope we do and honestly you owe us a dinner juicy i mean yeah. i feel like with that prize money you can afford to take rich and i out tonight talking about dinner let's see what ac and rf are cooking up in 2v2 here we go so it's so interesting andrew there's been a big discussion about whether how bands do and don't affect the gameplay and I think there's an argument to be said that a lack of bands in 1v1 did create a wider deck variety whether that's good or bad is a different discussion entirely yep uh, but we're seeing some evidence here in WCG that the bands actually create more deck variety in 2v2 yeah I actually really really enjoy it and you see a lot of stuff that you can maybe take back for that second part of the season back home to your respective country so now again, range up, giant prince behind Musketeer, just shoot like crazy, oh, wow. and again, back to this freeze deck. A very nice freeze coming in to take out those very high DPS troops. And even after all that, not only did RF and AC come out ahead on damage, but still ahead by a significant margin on Elixir as well. So both squads here kind of thinking about what to do next. Reaching the midway point of regulation time and right hand tower of Zhubao and Fearless down to 1783 AC and RF in pretty good condition on their side of the board. You know, and I really love the utility of the rage spell used now by Zhubao and Fearless. You saw that first push from Akram and the God RF. It just allows you to pump up your troops right when you need it. You don't need to sacrifice more Elixir and the Lumberjack to go down first. And that's a good point there, Andrew, that more Elixir. The two Elixir difference for your cycle is so valuable, but a big part of why rage has been popular in the CRL Asia and China regions. Yeah, I love that play right there. The High Prince, the Golem still in front. And you only get plays like that when you have perfect communication. Giant on tower and the defensive prince out of the way. Zap had to come out, yeah. but that right hand tower in a lot of trouble. Honestly, that zap, I, I think you hold it and I think you just go opposite lane. Conserve the two elixir. This is a lost tower. You know they have poison. You know they can poison cycle you out, no problem. And now they are doing exactly that, Rich. Opting to go the other lane, but with less elixir. This will be met fairly easily. Giant Double Prince, meaning Giant Double Prince. Musketeer high. And here comes a freeze from LGD, trying to get themselves back in the mix. A defensive freeze in response. Beautiful play by Amortis. Yeah, I love that. And that Musketeer getting a lot of value. You see the Mega Minion coming down to take it out of commission. But damage was already done. However, perfect defense from Oncrab and RF. And now they're starting to chip away on that right-hand side. Going into sudden death, and it's all but decided it would take some sort of miracle or an act of God or a disaster for immortals to fall in this moment. You can see that and just cycling a spell, put some princes down on that giant goblin cage in support, and we are very close to ending this set 3-0 for the North American champions from last year. Yep, there is the poison now just waiting on the log. There goes the log, and that is going to be tower down. An incredible showing from Immortal so far, taking five of the six games so far this match. So there you have a nice three-game sweep for AC and RF. That has to feel very good going into tomorrow. Yes, it's so very important to have that confidence. We've said it time and time again. You know what? I'm going to keep doing it. Confidence and momentum is everything in Clash Royale. That's why that 2v2 set was so important at CRL West. Teams kind of found that out a season late, and other teams that had figured out in the first season when it was NA and EU, they were the ones that triumphed, mainly Complexity and Queso. So we do have one more set remaining. We'll see who comes out. It could be AUK one more time. Maybe LGD mixes it up, and will we see Royal or La Picotti, or anybody could actually come out for this final set. That's so we'll be back point. in just a couple moments with your third and final set of the day.
Welcome, we're live from Xi'an, China for the World Cyber Games 2019. Oh, nice They're all in the clip! In the meanwhile, we've got Trace hiding in the back. He's going to be able to pick up the double kill. Lich in trouble. He comes to Storm. Oh, no, Carly will kill defensively. Trace oh. to save him, though. Welcome back, everyone, and we have three more games of Clash Royale coming your way. A 1v1 set between LGD and Immortal. Still no idea who's coming out yet, but nope. some speculation to be had. Might be La Picotti coming out and throwing some Mortar. Maybe we'll even see uh, Ah Crap come out and play some strange hog decks. That would be very interesting. I really do believe it's going to be La Picotti. I think you try to get him uh, uh, get get his feet wet before going into the, the big day that they have tomorrow. I think it's very important for him to come out and at least feel what it is like to play at WCG before he's in that very high pressure situation. Yeah, Lapo did have that big 2-0 game yeah. or 2-0 set to open up uh, or to close things out for Immortals last time. Mm -hmm. So. You know, that's, he's one of those guys where he's so young, but he still seems so comfortable in these big situations. I know. I'll be honest. I love the BM that comes out from La Picotta. You saw it in that very first match that they played two days ago. So now bringing him out again. You got Royal ready to go. ACRF, they had a great set. So now La Picotta would be a great way to close out their day. On the other side of it, LGD, I, I really don't know who we're going to see, Rich. I, I, maybe AUK. He's played, again, like I said earlier, 86 games this season. Yeah, it's a big weight to put on one guy's shoulders. So Good maybe you give him a break at this point. Maybe he wants to get back there, get back out there and get the win. Um, also, XYD hasn't had a chance to play today, so maybe we'll see him as well. Yeah, that, 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 that could be. Uh, XYD this season did okay in head-to-head -head play. It wasn't astounding, but he was at a nice 50% win rate, 60% overall when you include 2v2. So, yeah, maybe we'll see him come out, but we should be getting those players and bands very, very soon. And honestly, if we don't, Rich, I might just turn into a puddle. Yeah, I, I, you know, I actually had to go get iced coffee just so I would have some ice, also some energy, because this heat just saps you. You're, oh my you're gosh. like, I, I can beat the world until it all sweats out of me. So. And a big, big shout out to our counterparts, Modic and Ashtax, who oh, yeah. held it down for us today. Honestly, I don't think I would have been able to get through all three matches. And, you know, tomorrow we have all three on our shoulders, which we're very, very excited about. So, you know, a lot of love to those two gentlemen. Yeah, I'm going to load up. Heavily on liquids tomorrow to make sure I can get all the way through and you know watch Team Liquid, Team <laughs> do it there. Yeah, there it is. Can we get Team Ice out here, please? Because that it is so wetty. Let me tell you that it's not just the heat, man. 